This is the episode that y'all have been waiting for. Today, I get to interview Laura Akram, the previous social media manager for Thirsty's Diapers. So welcome back. This is show 103 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast. My name is Bailey. I'm the host of the podcast. And for four years, I've been interviewing cloth diaper brands, retailers, and parents about their cloth diaper journey. So today I'm thrilled to introduce and share Laura's story. I'm also a little sad because I should have recorded this episode earlier in Laura's career, but perhaps this is the best opportunity because Laura is leaving. She is moving on and she'll share where she's going next. But many of us know Laura in the cloth diaper industry because she is the face of Thirsties. She is the social media manager, the video, the content creator. You see her on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. She's everywhere sharing content and providing this really approachable and engageable and down to earth conversation with parents about cloth diapering. For many of us, we look to Laura for her wisdom and kind of that perspective on things. And we've created content alongside each other in tandem over the last couple of years. I've never actually had a chance to sit down with Laura until now or until the show. And I think you're going to enjoy it. I rearranged my schedule so that we could get this in a little bit earlier, just because I think this is a fantastic show. It has a lot to talk about Laura's career journey in cloth diapering, as well as kind of that experience as a social media manager or marketer for cloth diaper brand and what unique opportunities we've had in kind of that journey, as well as where Laura is going to go next and how and what and all of that jazz. This show is brought to you by my book. My book, Cloth Diapers, The Ultimate Guide to Textiles, Washing and More, is now available directly through me or on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. This quick how-to guide will get you started on cloth diapering. It's the basics you need to know in a paperback form. Everything. Well, almost everything up until 2021. We don't talk about alpaca and we don't talk about fixed flats in the book, but I can't wait to update it. And thank you for your ongoing support by purchasing my book through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or directly through me at theclothhyperpodcast.com. You can also support the show by purchasing stickers, coloring books, or just, you know, continuing to share it with a friend. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter for the podcast because Earth Day sales are coming and I will have the deets on those Earth Day sales. We even have Earth Day sales that have already come and gone by the time this show comes out, but you will want to be in the know. And if you're not on the list, go to clotheverpodcast.com, scroll to the bottom or a pop-up will come and be like, hey, you come sign up um, and you'll get on the list. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I can't wait to share this episode. When did it even start? I've been trying to think about where did I know Laura when I started? Was she here? When did your cloth diaper journey begin? How many yes. years ago? Years ago? So it started in 2013 with the birth of my first, my son. And my sister actually got me into cloth diapering. Because your sister so is... Bert Anderson. Bert Anderson, yes. Bert M. Anderson. And she had... Well, back then her blog was called First Time Mom. And now it's just Bert M. Anderson. Yeah, she was pretty big and popular when I I started in 2015. Mm -hmm. So Bert Mm -hmm. was everywhere. Um, And then that's where I saw you because you tagged along because you're her sister. Yes, yes. So when I had my first, I was a music teacher before having babies. And then I decided to take some time to be home with my kids And so I, I'm just an educator at heart and a communicator. (laughs) So she's like, well, you can help me with this. So I learned the blogging social media ropes from her and 
I got introduced, actually Thirsties was, they were some of the very first cloth diapers that I used. Their duo wraps were great with my newborns. And so I knew Thirsties and actually my sister wrote for the Thirsties. Oh, did she? Mm -hmm. I only knew her through Smart Bottoms. I only knew that she had worked with Smart Bottoms. I didn't realize that she had worked with Thirsties. But she also, before Smart Bottoms, um, yeah, she blogged for Thirsties. And so she knew the Merrills. And once she got into the cloth diaper industry in terms of working for a brand, she kind of knew that Thirsties was looking to grow their social media. And the person that was doing it was just looking for some more help, some more assistance. And so I got in touch with Thirsties, like, I love your product. I knew them from like reviewing their diapers and stuff. And on my Instagram, I actually have a sweet photo of my sis, my daughter. And they sent a like really sweet note when she was born. And that was even like before I started working for them. So I knew of Thirsties. I knew the company and they were like kind enough to like support me and like send send me a little congratulations card when my daughter was born. And so then a couple months later, I was like, well, I hear that you need some help. help. <laughs> and here are all of my skills. And I am passionate about a lot of the things that the company is passionate about, just like quality cloth diapers that work so that families can be successful. And it, it, the rest is his. I started when was working. that? When did you start? Like 2016, 2014? 2015, fall of 2015. Yep. yep. So pretty I, early on in your motherhood yeah. journey, really, yeah. considering you had a baby yeah. in 2013 and then yeah. you start working with Thirsties in Four Thirsties mm-hmm. in 2015. What was kind of your role or your title? Social media coordinator. Okay. I've always wondered what your legitimate title was. I was like, yeah. I know her as the face at Thirsties. What is right. she actually hired to do? Right. What am I, what do I do? I do. It was wild when, um, you know, I knew that I was going to be needing to transition off the team. Kathleen Merrill, who is the director of business development. She asked me to like, write down everything that I do. And so I made, <laughs> like a chart for every single social media platform and like engagement and scheduling and defining audience and like when I looked at it I was like good lord how have I been doing it you're not trained formally in social media at all so you're probably just learning as you go how do you kind of what did you do with that yeah so I lot there is so there are so many wonderful educators out there in the social media marketing um so I just I follow you know the social media examiner podcast website and then basically anyone they invite to interview I just looked up their stuff and I've done some training online and you know with social media it's ever changing and so you really do it is it is and you that was one of the things I was telling my replacement Jesse Owens I was like you have to schedule in probably at least an hour or so of just research and reading just to keep up on the ever changing the trends uh, the tools um but at its core social media comms and what we're doing is education and it is. you're a music teacher. Um, yeah. So it probably just relies on a lot of those mm-hmm. basics of uh, encouraging, supporting people to learn. Absolutely. And that, is, that was definitely my strategy. And it really worked out well, because right when I was starting, Facebook rolled out this magic thing called live. <laughs> live. And so it was basically like... I got to teach live free cloth diaper classes every Thursday. And for me, that was such a natural thing to do. And I would actually like 
I type out little lesson plans <laughs> for every live that I would, you know, I'd have my bullet points and like, what do I want to communicate? And, and then of course, you know, the nature of like watching for questions and responding to people, but it was, it was a beautiful thing. And it was definitely marketing through education, which I think is why it worked for me for so long. Yeah. So, and this is what, Six years. So it worked for six years. Six years. I had somebody, so someone sent in a question in which they absolutely loved everything that your, your videos are their favorite, one Aww. of the best ways they got into cloth diapering. Uh, and they're wondering if you'll ever make a guest appearance again. Oh, for thirsties or yeah. for any, for any you know, yeah, I think so. My plan once right now, I'm in the process of just kind of chat letting them the new team kind of shadow me so they can kind of see my process and so i'm training them and once like i've got them you know to a place where they feel good i'll probably like delete all the social media apps off my phone <laughs> for at a least good boundary yes <laughs> at least two weeks because I need to like retrain my brain, like how to like interact with my phone. And it's so weird, like working in social media, but also enjoying social media too. Like sometimes on the weekends, actually, I just like move the icon off of the home screen of my phone just to like, so I'm not constantly like checking to see like how, what I did, you know, what I posted, how's it doing, are there comments like, so I'll take I'll take some time to have some space, but I will forever be a thirsties groupie. Always. Um, I not anything official, but I've always been a really big fan of the cloth option and their advocacy and support of families. So maybe I'll, you know, be don't they have. I don't know what they call them advocates or advocates. I think, yeah, they have advocates in different States. They have, mm -hmm. and they have, uh, Katie had shared a little bit, Katie hair. She's not on social very much mm -hmm. either, but, um, lots of different ways that you can volunteer really. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there's lots of ways to give back in the community. Uh, this, this comment that I, this question that I had gotten, I was going to wonder what is your favorite piece of content that you've created over the last six years? Oh. Like, if, do you have an all time favorite video series <laughs> or social platform? I have a title that I'm pretty proud of. It's a very old, I think it's on YouTube. Otherwise it's in the Facebook video library. I did a thirsties live called flood insurance about like <laughs> dealing with when your baby gets older and their bladder matures. Right. And then they start holding it and releasing all their pee all at once. And in the cloth world, we call this flooding the diaper. <laughs> so I, that live was, I loved doing it. It was so much fun. And I was pretty proud of that, um, that title. I'm going to have to go find that. That's been a big DM in my comments lately. I think a lot of my followers are hitting toddlerhood <laughs> we've been yes. dealing with oh my gosh everything's suddenly leaking or my diaper is terrible it's not usually it's just very suddenly yeah like, you just, just like, need to, like, move absorbency and like really quick absorbency and um it that's one of the beautiful things though about cloth diapering is and I always talk about this on my lives is that cloth is customizable. And so as you learn about cloth diapering, just think of all of these things, all of these products, whether it's an insert, a prefold, think of them as tools in your toolkit. So then later when you hit some kind of snafu, because that's how babies are, right? Once you figure out one stage, those little adorable suckers go and change <laughs> yes. on us. Oh, right? they do. Right? How many kids and do you have? You have three? I've done two. this three, you've done this twice. You've done this twice. Yeah. yeah. Done this twice. And then after my daughter potty trained, I was honestly a little nervous, like, oh, can I continue like doing this job and like being relevant and knowing what to talk about? And really then after my kid graduated out of diapers, it all became about listening to the community and really, and our Facebook group, the Thirsties Groupies has just been such a great place for me to stay in touch with the community and just kind of, you know, when 
we notice, okay, we have a lot of questions about newborn cloth diapering or questions about X, Y, or Z, like how to even go about choosing a detergent, things like that. It's like, okay, we know what to talk about. So I, thought, I have to things. like really resonate with that in that yes. once, like once Anna finished potty training, um, suddenly like my pages, I didn't have anything to talk about. It right. wasn't about me. It suddenly became about, okay, what is everybody asking questions about? What are, yes. what are all the DMs? And it, it almost became a really awesome growth point. And I think if there's any mm-hmm. bloggers and content creators listening, like um, it's it's really exciting because you get to get out of your body and you get to look at, okay, what what is the needs happening in the community? And you get to really yes. react in a different way that is almost feels better and feels less, I don't know. I felt, found it to be very rewarding. Um, yes. I'm still here six years later too. Right. Uh, right. And it's just, you get to really listen and hear what's going on and get out of what you know in your story and really focus mm-hmm. on, okay, what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And it's incredible and it's incredibly diverse and mm-hmm. beautiful and wonderful. And it's changing. Like I think right? In the last six years, which is probably a great segue to Karen's question, which she wanted to ask, how have things changed since you started working with Thirsties? Do you feel like there's been some normalization of cloth? What's the vibe that you get over the last, since 2013, which what, seven, eight years? Right, right. One of the things that I've loved to see is the change in products and the Thirsties has so many different products and they really do try to kind of give a little something for everyone. But personally, I love that there's more products coming out using natural fibers. I mean, Thirsty's has always had amazing hemp cotton Jersey, right? They're prefold made of it. It's super trim. I, it's just, it's a magical fabric. Um, but now the addition of organic cotton and mixing the use of organic cotton with the hemp. And I just, me personally, that's what I preferred because boy, it was just hard to get microfiber to come clean. Um, it, it's a it's a necessary thing, but it is not my favorite. <laughs> so I've loved to see that. Um, and also a little bit of like what's old is new, like people loving flats and prefolds now. It's like, yes, these are, they're not scary. Like, you know, just fold that, you know what, into a rectangle. <laughs> as, <laughs> just Jack like this. And it's like, yeah, you, they're so easy to clean. So I've loved, I've loved seeing that kind of more products coming out in more natural fibers. Cause really when I first started, there was a lot of microfiber, um, and a lot of synthetics, 2013, 2014 micro fleece as well. Like polar yes. fleece was really big minky, that kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I've loved seeing that. I love a change that's just recently happened. Man, only like TikTok is an interesting place. But one of the things that I love about it, and I don't even know, I, I don't know how that algorithm works, but people who have nothing to do with cloth diapering see cloth diapering content. And it's like, sometimes you get the crabbies like, oh, that's so disgusting. I'm like, I couldn't even do that. But then you have genuine questions of like, wow, I don't even have kids, but maybe I'll do that. So I love that change. I love the conversations that you're having about like how to grow the community, how to make it more inclusive, um, having conversations like you don't have to be white suburban, live in a house to cloth diaper. Like my almost my first year of cloth diapering, I was doing it in an apartment and I was hand washing using a crank washer <laughs> you know, because that is like. It, the yes, my building had coin operated machines, but we weren't going to be able to afford that. Like I couldn't, I cut off out of like financial necessity. And also you I have love- a, you have a YouTube story on that though. Don't you, but there was, or you did a live. Yes. yes I know I, like I wrote I it down and then I totally missed it. Yep. Uh, there's a live on, on that story. He's YouTube. You, how to hand wash cloth diapers. You'll see me in my wonder wash cranking out the. And, and I was like, 
it's a st- pretty common story. I yeah. get that story in my DMs a lot. And just because it's not um, something about like content creation in general, those of us who are able to manage an Instagram and manage a blog and a YouTube, we have a privilege of time and resources and like yes. the amount of yes. uh, time and money that I've put into platforms is only because my husband has a very well-paid job. Yep. Um, and so we miss a lot of those stories, which is partly why I've been doing the podcast as an opportunity to capture mm-hmm. other people's stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that loves and people are thriving in their diapering experiences mm-hmm. doing the unconventional. I don't even want to say unconventional. It's what they got to do. What, yeah. It works for yeah. them. Or unexpected. Yeah. What the I unexpected. think that there, there is, and hopefully we are broadening this picture, but I think that there's a certain picture that people might have of like what the cloth diapering family is. And hopefully that is becoming broader and broader and broader. So there's TikTok not TikTok just- has given us such a great opportunity for people to create content without yeah. needing and so oh, there's so many yes. incredible stories coming up yeah. from people sharing just like in this super organic way that's down mm-hmm. to earth and like this is what I'm doing and I'm not fighting an algorithm it's just showing up to random people exactly right? I love it. that's what I've loved about TikTok is like exposure to new audiences in ways that Facebook and Instagram have never been able to do for us yes absolutely absolutely it's, it's, it's such a wild platform at the same time. It's it like is. Boundaries. I need boundaries on it. Yeah, the first time I opened it up, I was like, goodness gracious, what is happening here? And now it's like, oh, I love this. I uh, started a new account. I run local pages for my downtown business improvement association. And I started an account for them. And just like, I forgot how tailored my, my feeds were. And so yeah, TikTok's trying to learn who I am in this page. And I was like, there's all these other sites I forgot about. It's right? wild. Wild. <laughs> it's starting to learn who I am and what I want to consume. Right. But yeah, the first time I got on there. Okay, so this is probably like a total pivot in which somebody asked, um, maybe you can spill the deals. Maybe, maybe it's top secret, but how does Thirsties choose their prints? Oh, yes. And will they ever well, think about re-releasing was the big question. But I, I feel like how do we how does Thirsties <laughs> choose prints? <laughs> Well, a big thing that we do is we listen to our customers in the Facebook group in particular, the Thirsties groupings on Facebook. And so I just watch, you know, our team, we just watch the posts. And actually, I have a little tag that I add to ideas that people share like, oh, I really love, a, you know, well, let's see what have been some ones that we've done like Oh, the hot air balloons was a big ask for a while or, oh, otters that actually sometimes they, the Thirsty's groupies make their own hashtags, like their own nags. (laughs) And And guys, like this is what Laura's sharing right now is not just a thirsty secret. We see this happen in all the brand groups. So like if Thirsty's not your go-to choice, you could nag in any Facebook any, group. Anyone. Go back yeah. Taya's any, Facebook group. Let them yes. know. Let them all know. They're watching for you. Yes, absolutely. And then we have um we have ideas. We have artists that we work with. And any print that we do has to be in the works, like at least a season or two ahead of when it's produced just because of how that timeline works. And so we're always like, okay, you can't be giving us, you know, your fall nags, like in fall, you need to be doing that. Like at the very beginning of the year, Maybe <laughs> so January, at the end of last fall, right. Um, right. The production time, and you yes. guys are made in America mm-hmm. or even made in China. Production times are wild. Yes. I think Blueberry talked a little bit about their production times like 2015, 2016. And I just like did not understand as a consumer that it yeah. would take so long to manufacture, PUL, mm-hmm. print it, yes. assemble it, all that jazz. 
And there are so many factors too that come in with like suppliers and timelines. And um, the pandemic was wild because there were, and I don't know if you saw this in other places in the industry, but so many people buying diapers in 2020 because they needed diapers. Like sometimes they're, the disposables were just running out or they didn't want to have to go out to get diapers. And so we saw a huge growth, um, in sales that year. Everybody did. Yeah. It huge was growth. like, wow. <laughs> like we Wait. were not predicting this. Yes. Yep. Yep. And so then when that happened, it was like, all right, I need to assume like all my content, like how to be successful, like basic cloth diapering, how to, and all of that, because you don't want people to just buy a bunch of diapers and not know how to use them. Cause there it is fully is a learning curve when it comes to cloth. So actually that's a, I have a question there in which I know that a lot of brands and content creators have shared this and there's like a burnt out on answering the same question over and over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. Do you have any tips on how you've managed that? Do you do burnout on it? I mean, sometimes you see the 17th ask about a wash routine or a 17th ask about a product rec, and you're just like, I have made 17 videos. Um, How have you navigated that? Yeah, I think I just kind of assume, I, I look at it as, so my husband's a professor, right? So he has like a new crop of students that just keep coming through. And really that's how it is with the cloth diapering world too, is that you've got this new class of parents or caregivers and just think like, yeah, they they need to have this foundation as well. So I kind of think of it that way. Also empowering your community to educate because I think we just need to multiply the cloth <laughs> knowledge and, you know, you can't be the end all be all troubleshooting mm-hmm. everyone's routine because you just are one person. Even within your business, you can't be. Right. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, empowering. And then it's just it's amazing, like how there are people that have been watching hashtag Thursdays live with Laura for years and they know so much. And in some ways, and like, especially the flats parents, like, cause I, I actually never used flats. So I've just been learning from people and I just watch like, Oh, just do this fold because it puts this absorbency right in this area. And I'm like, yes, I am taking Got that. asked for an infographic about that. I was like, I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little research. Yeah. How do I know which fold goes. I was like, I'll just fold them all the same. Okay. So you didn't use flats. This is like a pivot and we're circling back to something, but you hand wash. What were you hand washing? I was hand washing. Well, wow. so when I was living in the apartment, I loved all in twos. So I did a lot of, oh, I'm trying to think. Like a standard insert then, hey? Yeah. A standard insert. I think was buttons maybe just starting around there or I'm trying to think if I use buttons with my daughter just but some yeah sort of I insert. oh no I used soft bums oh. and I don't even think that they're I don't know what's going on no idea what happened to them but their little toggle elastic adjustment at the legs was really great for my skinny chicken leg babies mm, yes so it would be a, yeah so that was but I don't know what happened to them and that's like yeah, that's I think sometimes the story we miss in hand washing we talk we preach flats but you really could hand wash anything mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you got it flats are just easy but you could do anything you, you really could. could so where where are you going you're going back to your job as a music teacher focusing back mm-hmm. on that is that what's happening yes so I've actually been doing both for a long time for uh, this is my third year at I teach at Faith Academy here in Iowa City and it's a wonderful nonprofit Christian school that just is very just hands-on in the community working with families um yeah I could just go on and on about (laughs) how awesome awesome the school is but my my position there has kind of grown particularly I teach music and now I'm teaching band Yes. So 
all the excited all the music things early. yes <laughs> yes I'd love to like maybe get a chorus going or like do some after school stuff so yeah it's it's a great school and I just have been well, when the pandemic started and everything went online, I started a YouTube channel, Mrs. Oh, Ancrum's, yes. Mrs. Ancrum's Music Room on YouTube. So you'll if you've watched any Thirsty's videos and, you know, the aqua colored wall behind me, um, you will go to Mrs. Ancrum's Music Room and you'll see that very same wall. And you're like, wait a minute, I recognize that space. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and so where where do you want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in five years? That's a great question. I would love, I'd love to be teaching music, of course, in Faith Academy. I'd love to be doing some more music in the community. Like I have a dream of like a parent caregiver taught like free music classes that we can bring families into the school. Um, when you look at like literacy learning and things like that, like babies that are sung to, or like do nursery rhymes and things like that, the, the scores and like how they like just grow as a communicator are just, it's, it's just off the charts. So my non singing family and my child who is struggling with reading being like, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And the thing is, and and this is part of why I got in. So it's funny, my Mrs. Ancrum's music room and a lot of the things I talk about on Thursday's live kind of, you can tell like they're coming from the same place. I'm, and I'm saying like anyone can make music anywhere. Music is not just for quote the musicians. Like I, I do believe like we all have the capacity in us um, to learn and to grow. And like on Thursday's live, I talk about like with the right products and know how anyone can cloth diaper anywhere. And it's like, you know, all of these good things I just want to like put out into the world and like empower people to feel like they can do it. Like you can be making music with your family. You can be cloth diapering and you can they just, they all, they do all overlap. I like right? my background in sustainability and like the work that I do. Uh, I find that It's all the same messages, just repackaged in different ways for different niches. Exactly. Which is really, uh, yeah, that's why I laugh. I just think about all the different ways that I've repackaged the same message from other niches into new things. My, Mm -hmm. we are, I didn't grow up with music at all. So it's such, um, such a strange thing for me my family like my my dad's family is Mennonite and like Mm. real music would have been like faux pas even though they were modern Mm -hmm. Mennonites and Mm -hmm. it's just like trust yeah it's an interesting world to get into when you just didn't grow up with it right (laughs) um I can see all the benefits I mean I know I'm a smart I'm a smart woman I know I can see it it's just an interesting shifting of your own culture and Mm -hmm. Even what you were raised with was not, it's just subtle, all these subtle changes. Um, it's so exciting to hear you going back to the music and all of that. And the community is so excited for you. And we're also so sad, but so thrilled. And the closing of an era, we knew these days were going to come, but right. that's where right. it has to, it, it's awesome. I'm, I'm excited and I will always be a cloth advocate, you know, no matter (laughs) when or where or who, you know, I'll be the person shopping and I'll see like a little peek of a cloth diaper and be like, Hey, look at you know the one like you use cloth that's so exciting i'll be like the cheerleader all always um I'll you've say, probably learned so many incredible things yes. over the last six years that oh, you yes. can use going into your your next stage of your life right absolutely. talking with people and absolutely and that's one of the things that i love about the cloth community is that more than not there it's a community of people who want to see each other succeed and so that is just like 
the ethos that I just kind of live by is I, I am a human wanting to help other humans flourish and succeed wherever they are, whether that's, you know, as a parent and of one of my students or a cloth diapering family, like that's just what I'm about. Yeah. And that's, I like, we could just bundle that up and use that as our mantra for everything. Right. And I'm so excited to see the new team at Thirsties. I saw they introduced themselves today, which is irrelevant because this show will be coming out probably April. So, but yeah. the, the new team is, gonna be is like getting in there kids. and they're, they're going to build up that community and that trust and you're there supporting them and you've been sharing your knowledge. Yep. Any final it's gonna words? Gonna it's going to be great. I'm so going to be. I'm so excited and I'll just, you know, be like watching now all the things that Thirsty's is going to come out with and new products and prints and all the fun things. And I'll just be surprised now when it happens instead of knowing he, he, all the information when it comes out. Somebody, a brand recently shared a, an announcement that they're going to have with me and I don't, it doesn't happen a whole lot, to be honest. I sometimes get in on the scoop, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm almost a little bit bummed that I'm not going to be excited when I see their Prince launch in March. Cause I'm like, no, no, I already <laughs> know. I already know. I mean, it was exciting in that moment, but I don't get to be excited with the rest of the people. Right. So. Now I'll be able to be excited with the rest of them. And I'll be like, oh, you're sharing a hint, but that's not, oh, you just need to show us. Maybe, oh, are you good? Are you good? <laughs> you think maybe you'll get the hint, the hint uh, market down place, you know, Thirsty's game. But I mean, the new social managers might hint they- differently. Yeah. And I just, I can't wait to see, you know, what they do. We've got Serafina, who's just been awesome in our community. And she's just, she's been pouring into our community just as a customer for years. And so she's going to be awesome, just supporting people. And Jesse Owens, like she is a photographer and just a beautiful soul. Like they both just care so much about the community and people they're going to be they're going to be fantastic. And I can't wait to see a, like, what new things they do yeah. too. It's a good to get fresh blood as well. It is. New ideas, new perspectives, new life experiences, worldviews, get different experiences oh. on how things will be awesome. It'll be great for our community. Uh, oh, and two people too. Two, you're being replaced by two. <laughs> yeah. So it'll, yeah. And, and that's a, I'm glad that they're doing that because I think two are better than one. And especially when it comes to just, you know, running that content creation machine, like <laughs> having some margin on both sides, having multiple. Yeah. Fam- <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's going to be good. Since recording this episode, you can find Laura now on TikTok. She created a music teacher themed TikTok, as well as on YouTube. I'm so excited for Thirsties for moving on. That did not sound appropriate, but what an amazing career for Laura to have spent so much time creating our community and nurturing our community and creating content and to have two new beautiful content creators joining the Thirsties team. It's been so much fun seeing them creating content, creating conversations, and doing all that jazz. I don't have much else to say to you today, but thank you so much and I will see you online.